Hello, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 3 with some exhibition matches for you today. So, first off, we're gonna have a match between Norm616 and Pear on Tartarus, which is a map that actually apparently is not new, but I don't recall ever having seen before. Looks kinda cool though, so we'll just start with that and see how it plays out. We have. Pear starting in the southwest corner of the map, and Norm starting in the northeast corner with light vehicles. Pear has not chosen his factory yet. He is going for light vehicles as well, given this map. As you can see, it is a rather flat map. It's also rather dull and... Actually, whoa, never mind, it's actually kind of bright out. But it is still a bit of a volcanic hellscape, just the way I like it. Because volcanoes are actually pretty cool things. Anyhow, as you can see, it is a fairly flat map. There are some hilly areas to the sides. I mean, pretty much jump and spider only accessible. It looks like this area here is actually regular bot accessible, but the top section would be jump and spider only most likely. Though I can't easily check. Let's should be able to pathing test off of here. So we can see it is purple up here. However, it is red going along the lower section, so bots will be able to get... That is with the commander, by the way. Commander has bot pathing. So that's how it would work. So yes, also, as you can see, Pear has upgraded his Beam Laser E-Cell Commander, while Norm has also gone Beam Laser E-Cell. Not that... Not that unexpected. Pear went for a bit of a scout, but not quite able to take out even one Metal Extractor. Bit of more of a raid, really. And it looks like Norm is going for a counter raid. Bringing in three Scorches of his own. Probably will be actually able to deal a fair amount of damage. It looks like only a couple Scorches have come out for Pear so far. He is building levelers very early on. Interestingly enough, he is not going for more Scorchers, so he's intending to just go for the anti-raider option right away. Now, Levelers against Scorchers is a little bit tricky, though Levelers do pretty much have the advantage, as would be expected. They are a Riot unit. They are supposed to have the advantage there. And first battle being joined, we have Norm's Scorcher. Norm losing a Scorcher for basically free, able to slightly damage one of Pears, but that Scorcher got way out of position, Got hit by both of Paris Scorchers, and bear in mind, Scorchers, of course, deal more damage the closer they are to the opponent, so that was not the best micromanagement from Norm. I should point out that both players have pretty much even economies. They're basically exactly in the same position. Also, incidentally, neither of them have started to build up power plants yet. In fact, Norm is the first person building power plants. Everyone has been relying on E-Cell thus far, and Norm has gone for power plant. Point out that Pear does have radar. Norm also has radar. Both players able to see pretty much into the center of the map. As you can see, Pear definitely can see the center of the map, as can Norm. So both players well aware of what's going on in the center. As such, Norm is well aware that Pear is setting up some defenses. He's setting up his army just in the center. And also getting his expansions around. Definitely being a bit bolder, but not by much towards the center. One of the big things is that he does have a laser turret, which we'll be able to block off. However, the big reason he won't be easily attacked here is the Scorchers. The laser turret does help, but really it's the fact that there's a larger army behind it. That's what's going to make a difference. However, Norm really doesn't care. He's going around. He's just building around. Both players really just building around. It's something been a bit of a no-man's land here, actually. Surprisingly enough, it's been almost 30 seconds, and neither player has gone and tried to blow each other up. That being said, it looks like Pear will start to leapfrog in a bit. He does have a Slasher set up. The Slasher is pretty much in position, and the Scorch is right behind it in case of a counterattack, and Pear is going for it. He is going to try to dive out that Slasher, losing another Scorch of his own. By the way, at this point, Norm is the only one who's actually lost any units. Pear has not managed to lose a unit so far. Or so he's managed to not lose a unit so far, since losing units is not the goal of the game. Forcing your opponent to do so, however, is. Or at least it's a large part of it. And it looks like Norm is setting up a Lotus, but really to no avail. He's trying to repair as best he can, but the Slasher slowly but surely is overpowering it. Back at base, it looks like Norm is setting up... Oh, right, I forgot to turn off map marks. No, what? There we go. Norm is setting up a... Well, a whole army of Slashers, really. Slashers, Levelers, Raptors. He is making sure that he has an opening here. But at the same time, Norm is trying to make himself an opening. Getting rid of this, this Lotus. Gotten rid of it. Just barely a Scorcher survives. And nice distraction, however. He's pulling Pear away from the west side of the map. And I think Norm 
Is he going to take advantage of this? That's the big question. He does have all the Scorchers on the west side of the map, and Paris Scorchers went off to the east side of the map, which admittedly is open. Norm does not have any defenses on there, but Para has no defenses on the west side either. He has the one leveler, and that could probably be killed by a good dive. Especially with the Slasher there. I mean, that Slasher needs to get rid of that Slasher. Like, Norm needs to get rid of that Slasher. He is, at this point, not doing great for metal. I mean, he's still ahead of Pear, but he is getting harassed out. He's That Slasher is still pushing the west side of the map. The only reason why Norm hasn't completely really lost to this, or really been a disadvantage as a result of this, is that he's been expanded to the side more than Pear has. Pear has not taken advantage of the, all the metal patches on his side of the map that he basically has under his control, while Norm has. So that's... Certainly something going for Norm. Now, Leveler meeting up with the Scorchers, and we are going to see the Scorchers going to do what they can against the Leveler, and it's going to actually... No, they're not going to try to do that much. They are going for the Mason instead, and the Leveler will be able to kill all of them. Not for free, though. Losing a Mason. Norm is down one Mason, but also Pear is down, down a Commander. He's going to lose his Commander right now. A dive coming in, and a successful dive. That is Pear's Commander on the ground, smoking and dead, with Norm's Scorchers surrounding it, which, well... That's kind of what happens in a Scorcher dive. They do die for the purposes of killing off the enemy commander. And it looks like Norm trying to go for a revenge attack, but with Slashers instead, considerably scarier because Slashers won't die in the process. Admittedly, it's much less sudden, but still, Slashers will not die in the process, so whatever Slashers are used to kill that commander, go on to kill the rest of the base, and Pear actually has not been ex getting a whole lot of metal. Compared to Norm, you see Norm has 19 metal thus far. He's not reclaiming from anything. He's just got enough metal extractors around the map, and it looks like a bit of overdrive as well. No, no overdrive. Never mind. While Pear, on the other hand, has... Well, he does have about... He has six expansions or so, or six metal extractors or so, but it's just not... It's not enough. I mean, Pear really is behind an economy. However, he is trying to make up for it by this attack in the west side of the map. And it looks like Norm doesn't have a whole lot of defense for it. He has a Ravager coming in. But the Leveler and Ravager from... Well, everything from Pear really getting rid of this economy side. And Norm losing more and more Metal Extractors just about even up with Pear. The only downside, Pear did have all of his energy in his commander, which means right now he only has three energy. Which is pretty much out of luck that he happened to have these wind gens built up beforehand. Norse Commander just about to be morphed into level 2. Not sure he has a level 2. He might have a Lazarus device. If he does, that's going to help him out quite a bit. And a Ravager being pushed in here to try to get rid of all these Scorchers. That will get rid of one, but that's all it'll do. The other two Scorchers will finish it off, and another Ravager coming in to try to help out, but... Unfortunately, he needs more Ravagers to make that work. And actually, 150 to 250... Yeah, actually, I think Ravagers probably would be fine for costing against Scorchers, but he does have to use them. He has to push in with them if he wants to make that work. And he is not doing so. Now, Norm, let's see what he's building up here. He does have Levelers and Ravagers coming in, which... Pear is focusing more on Slashers. Not surprised, they have been working well for him. And he is getting more power. In fact, Pear has gotten an advantage of power compared to Norm. Norm lost all of his power plants... Still is his commander, and commander has personal shield and damage booster as level 2 morphs. So really concerned about keeping his energy income alive. And Norm, I'm kind of curious why Norm has... Why does Norm have more metal? I mean, he has... See, how many metal extractors does he have? Getting the right colors. Or, or not. Okay, anyway. Bit of reversed colors, but yeah, Norm has... As six metal extractors compared to pairs five. I'm not sure where Norm is reclaiming from. He's got to be reclaiming, but I don't see it. He's building another metal extractor here. But yeah, I don't see the reclaim anywhere, so I'm not sure. Like, pair should have about 10 metal income, that's right. But Norm should only have about 12 or so. 14. But. Yeah, it's kind of bizarre. I'm not sure where that other five metal is coming from, and I'm sure someone on the stream is going to point out where it is coming from. This is just confusing me, though, because normally the reason this would happen would be overdrive. Like, or reclaim. Neither of which is really popping up. Although, that being said, Pear is reclaiming, and he is managing to get, at least with reclaim, a bit of an even footing. And even without that, he's actually been doing really well 
just powering through. Like, really good use of military up to this point. Admittedly, he lost those Scorchers early on, but the use of the Slashers has been very powerful in pressuring Norm back. It's just that Norm has gotten a stronger economy. Like I said, I'm still not sure exactly how. It's... Just Norm has gotten a stronger economy. I'm guessing that... I'm, my guess is that one of these metal extractors is not the same value as the other. Ah, I see. It's this this side metal extractor is worth nearly three. So that would help a lot. And it, like I said, Pear has not bothered to get his... It, it's been safe for most of the game. I don't really know why, why he hasn't bothered to get that. Norm's commander once again under attack. However, that shield is of some use. None of the units are actually diving under the shield to ne negate it. However, it doesn't really matter. The shield has gone down and a couple more Ravager shots should take out the commander. However, another... Well... <laughs> Ravager of Norms is helping to stop that. That being said, Pear still has a powerful army coming in here. Just, unfortunately, his direct assault units are not exactly available. The Slashers, however, in a great position to deal with everything that has been built up so far. Norm does have a couple defensive units coming in. But at the same time, Pear also has more support. Leveler coming in for support while Ravager and Leveler come to try to defend against this. The Slashers must leave, but they still managed to really slow down Norm's economy. And at this point, Norm's actually been floating point out that despite the fact that Norm has had an economic advantage, he has not translated that into a production advantage. This Mason very likely to be the thing to do exactly that. And Pear retreats into a slasher line, which needs to retreat back to the laser turret in order to not die. Ravager coming up from behind to help out, but unfortunately that, or unfortunately for Pear, fortunately for Norm, that leveler nicely evens things out, and Pear is actually now at a major military disadvantage. Despite all that pressure, it's not really been helpful, and Norm... Once again, morphing his commanders is very bizarre. He has now, like I said, translated his economy advantage into production. But that does mean that he needs more economy once again. I'm still surprised how little he's been relying on static power structures, though. Compared to Para, Para has a lot of power plants. Admittedly, most of them are wind generators on a map that doesn't have a great wind income. So we can see it's getting 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Not especially great. Very risky here. It's still... Actually, no, it's just died out. All of his wind power has pretty much gone to nothing. This map doesn't apparently have very good wind, and he's not on any cliffs. Like, this isn't that high. This area here is not that high off the ground. It barely counts, so I don't know really what his motivation for using this particular section was. This is a cliff. This is not so much. Anyway, Norm is coming in with Ravagers along the east side of the map, and they are doing a pretty good job, actually, with Commander helping out to morph... Er, well, morphing and repairing them. Well, was repairing them. Now, without repair, that's not going to be doing too well. In fact, losing a Ravager here, and Norm's still able to push through. I mean, the thing is, Pear does have a military disadvantage. He's had an economic disadvantage for most of the game, and that's starting to really work against him. He was actually doing quite well before, despite his military disadvantage. But now, it's just not working out. And it looks like Norm is just going to be slowly grinding through for the kill... Getting these Ravagers in here, getting rid of the power plants, which admittedly haven't been doing too much, but still, getting rid of them nonetheless. Ravagers just getting rid of everything they can, getting rid of the laser turret, opening up the west side of the map. Not that it really matters for Norm, but still, opening up the west side of the map regardless. That commander morph is still going on. I'm kind of surprised that Norm's been doing that. I mean, that takes away resources from building new vehicles. Must have some really good... I mean, the thing is, you don't usually go for morph like this. Granted, he's in a reclaim field, as you can see. He is definitely making use of that to avoid running out of resources. But still, that's something you don't really do too often. And in fact, he's running out of power more than anything else. Getting more power plants built up just to make up for that. But still, running out of power first, not the best thing to have happen. Actually, going to start excessing on metal while reclaiming. That, not the most useful thing to have happen. Once He is repairing, but repair time uses energy. It uses entirely energy, so still he needs a lot more power. Like That's been kind of his one weakness. Admittedly, Pear was also relying a lot on power and really needed to have windmills on cliffs, not on the flat at the bottom. The very low flats do not really do much good for wind generators. And Norm, now he's coming in, going for the kill. Pear trying to do what he can. The levelers, while able to theoretically dodge the Ravager shots and still able to hit just fine, not actually making use of that. Because Leveler of Shot is, of course, instant, while Ravager Shot has to travel to the air in between. Well, okay, Leveler, Leveler Shot isn't instant. It's just a lot faster than Ravager Shot. 
basically doesn't miss. For Norm, a head on Ravager count and not much else in the place to destroy. I mean, no slashes in place, no dominatrices in place, and nothing really beyond that to, yeah, nothing really else to deal with it. The only other possibility, I suppose, would be a lot of Scorchers, but the thing is, to do that, Pair would need a massive economic advantage, or at least you need 20 metal or so with the Caretaker, and he doesn't have that. While at the same time, Norm does have a lot of Reclaim, he is pushing that Reclaim energy into his base, into his production, and into Morph as well, and he does have a Lazarus device now at level 3. I'm just surprised he's going for it. He really knows he can win. He just knows that he's so far ahead, because no one ever morphs like this. You don't, you don't ever morph your commander like this in a serious 1v1. But I think he's figured out that he's basically got the game in the bag. And he might as well just do it. And Pear has thrown in the towel! That is game! A little bit underwhelming, but... Not a bad demonstration of what Tartarus does. Though admittedly, it's still a little bit confusing. I just... I guess, okay, the edge mexes are worth 3. The in-base mexes are worth a little more than 2. <sighs> Definitely not a map with normalized mexes. But at the same time, Pear really did have a lot of mechs. I'm not sure what happened there. Regardless, going to be going to another game fairly shortly, so stay tuned for that.